All right, so Rocio Rodriguez received her MF BFA and MFA degrees from the University of Georgia. She has exhibited widely in over 30 solo exhibitions, including galleries, contemporary art centers, and museums, and in over 90 curated exhibitions in the United States. Her work is in various permanent collections, among them the High Museum of Art, the Huntsville Museum of Art, the New Orleans Museum of Art, the Telfair Museum of Art, the Museum of Art in Fort Lauderdale, and of course, Mocha GA, in addition to numerous private collections. She has been the recipient, recipient of a number of awards, among them an anonymous was a woman award, a Sintus Foundation Fellowship, a Southern Regional Fellowship at the American Academy in Rome, Italy, an Art 80 Award, and a residency at Marfa Contemporary in Marfa, Texas. Her work has also been featured in two books, Out of the Rubble and No Placeness, Art in a Post-Urban Landscape. This is the second retrospective of her work, the first being at the Columbus Museum of Art in Columbus, Georgia in 2012. So please join me in welcoming Rocio Rodriguez. Um, I'm not gonna talk in here for too long because you're standing and I wanna thank you for coming out on a very cold night and um, being here. But I wanted to start here because um, the back right there is there's sort of a narrative that travels in the show. And it begins in 1988 with the back wall there. And then it goes up this wall and it comes around here into these three large drawings. And then we're gonna move into the big room. But I just wanna make a couple of little notes about the work in here and I'm gonna walk back there because I feel more comfortable when I'm near the work. Um, so, um, I was a figurative painter. Um, I started out painting very large, um, full-size figures when I was in college. And um, I would probably say that in the late 80s is when I started developing a more mature voice. And um, the work was figurative at the beginning. And as you see, it starts to sort of fall apart as you go. And by falling apart, I mean um, the figure starts to be broken down. There is a certain kind of um, duality that seems to occur in my work, and it's a recurring theme or um, a recurring state of mind. And it occurs with the figurative work and with the more ornamental work in the back and then in the central room you'll see it. And I don't really have <clears throat> an explanation for that other than I have a bicultural personality and at a very early age I had to learn how to navigate two different worlds and um, my family moved to Athens, Georgia, and we were the first Hispanic family there. And at home, we spoke Spanish, and my parents were very tied to their culture. So at home, I was Cuban, and then when I stepped out the door, I was American. And I sort of had, before my 30s, it was sort of a difficult kind of identity thing to kind of like navigate what am I really. And um, a lot of this work, I think, is an investigation of that um, in terms of coming down to what the essence of the form is or the essential quality of, of the figure. And the figure starts out, you know, kind of breaking apart to where then it becomes like a, a metaphor. The body becomes a metaphor for that search. Um, so much so that the, one of the last drawings is my fingerprint. One of those drawings over there is just my fingerprint to where my identity becomes that. Um, in these drawings here, and then we're going to move over there, there seems to be like a performance happening. Um, in these drawings here, there, this drawing here and this drawing, these drawings here, um, we're very much about the creative process. Um, it's sort of like I'm the person who, who it's like being two people inside of 
the self, one who commands and one who performs. And um, these are very much about the creative act. And drawing or making art is very much like that. It's this constant conversation that you have inside of yourself. And sometimes the work dominates you, and sometimes you dominate the work. And um, there were, these are only four examples, but there were numerous drawings that dealt with that subject matter. And um, I want to say that if anybody has a question, please join in, because I don't really like standing here and talking, pontificating about my work. And I'd much rather be having a conversation with you than just talking about it. So then, um, after this body of work was done, I had really come to the end of this figurative phase in my work. And, then it, it, and also, it was the beginning, I can't stand this microphone, it was the beginning of um, abstraction. And a lot of people ask me, well, how did you, why are you an abstract painter, or why do you like abstraction? And it wasn't like I woke up one day and decided to be an abstract painter. It just doesn't work that way. It's a process in the way that you, your work takes you there. Um, I had to teach a class one time called abstract painting, and I didn't even know how to teach it. Because I thought, that's just ridiculous to teach abstract painting. You, you have to come to it naturally. And it has to be, the work forces, it, the abstraction, the vocabulary forces itself on you, rather than you just saying, well, I'm just gonna make an abstract painting. And so as I kept on working, the body started to disappear, and then it just became what this is right here. We're going into abstraction here. So that's how the journey happened from the figurative all through here. And then I was fortunate enough to win this amazing award to go to the Rome Academy. And um, when I went to Rome, I had just finished this work and I didn't have any thought in mind of what I was gonna do. And um, I, in Rome is an extremely overwhelming place, um, very beautiful, and uh, a lot of information. And um, I became, I started noticing a lot of the ornamentation on the tile floors in churches and, and in the Roman houses in the Palatine and in Ostia Antica. And I became very enamored or very curious about the little ornaments that were decorating the um, walls and the buildings. So that first journey to Rome was more of a research-oriented um, residency. It was three months. And I, I just went around the city just with a little notebook. And, and I was w waiting for some grand idea to hit. And, and then I would find myself on a wall just staring at all the ornamentation and making these little notes about it. But I didn't know where that was taking me because I never really know where I'm going in my work until I get there. And um, it's very much a journey and there's a lot of detours along the way. But these drawings back here, I don't have any drawings from the original residency in Rome. I just have notes, but I made a second visit to Rome and um, stayed at the academy, and I completed a set of drawings there. And um, these drawings, I visited the um, uh, Etruscan tombs in Tarquinia, and, and, and beautiful wall, they're, they're beautifully painted inside and they have all kinds of ornamentation. So I made a lot of notes and that's where those drawings came out of. This little design here happens to be a Leonardo da Vinci design that he had on the corner of a little drawing of his. And I zeroed in on that little corner and I drew it on my little notebook and then it became paintings and then it kept appearing in paintings that I did and then more drawings, because all these drawings have a lot of paintings that came with them. And it's just a selection of 
those pieces. And then I went to Spain on a residency, and um, I was got involved in these in uh, these floral designs that I was doing over there. And I also did a series of paintings when I came back based on this work. And doing this work was not easy for me because um, I was questioning a lot the notion of beauty and, and how it's used in 20th century, 21st century. And, and uh, I was making these kind of pretty drawings and it was sort of a transgressive act for me. And, um, but it, it was a very freeing thing because uh, I just think it's so important for you to do the art you have to make no matter what and not listen to the outside world and all those little judgments. And, if, and so I decided to make them as pretty as I possibly could, which would probably horrify all my art teachers in college, because you know you don't do anything ornamental, you don't do anything decorative, you don't do anything feminine. So um, it was sort of like a big thumbs to that. <laughs> and I decided if I was gonna go there, I was really gonna go there. And there was a whole set of paintings that were done along the way that um, dealt with the issue of beauty. Can you talk about your technique of erasing? Oh yeah, that, I, I consider erasing drawing. It's, it's just part of drawing. It's just you have to, you know, it's, it makes a mark. And the reason I, I love drawing is because um, once you make a mark on a paper, on, I mean, it's there and you can't get rid of it. In painting, you can always throw gesso on it if you're working in acrylics and it's gone, or you can put tons of oil paint on top. But paper is like porous and it's alive to me. And drawing is so direct. And, and for me, it's a process of discovery. And, and so erasing Bec you know, you start out with something and then I'm going, no, erase, no. And then all of a sudden the, the drawing is acquiring a certain kind of history on its own. And, um, and so I like the process of thinking. Actually, I'm not really thinking when I'm drawing because I'm drawing. And that's a very hard thing to describe. You're in this space where you're not really, you're just reacting constantly to what you're doing. You're not having these, you know, you, you kind of step out of it and go, oh, that looks awful. Okay, that's, that's a judgment, and that's like you thinking. But when you're really doing this, when I'm really doing this, it's just a, a, an, a, a performative act where you just like are in that, in that space in your head where you're just letting it happen until something inside says click, yes, I'm gonna keep that, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it away. And um, that erasure, I'm so glad you asked about that, because that's a very important part of all my work, is the taking off and putting back in and having that, that history of what happened on that piece of paper visible. So um, it, it's very, obvious in the other room too. Any questions about this? Yeah. Hey. Thought process. <laughs> thought process from your drawing process to your paintings. How do you, because these are, you're talking about the spontaneous, the mark making, the racing. How do you move from this to your paintings? Well, I can, I can do that two ways. Uh, how do I move my process from drawing to painting? Well, I call it like painting on your feet. Painting on your feet is very much like drawing, where you just go in the studio and there's the canvas, and you just start. And then you, well, no, no. I don't, like, you mean if I were gonna do paintings when I did this? Right. Right, but I'm still, I can still erase. Oh yeah, I have turpentine and a rag and that works wonders. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you're, I call it, there's two ways that I approach painting. 
One is what I call painting on my feet, which means there's the canvas, there's the paint on the table, start the painting. And then there's the rag and the turp, and it's very much the same process. It takes a little bit longer because oil doesn't dry real fast. Now, I, I do both, acrylic and oil. So with um, ore, I do paintings that are based on a study. Like that little first painting down there, that, was this, that became a, a large painting. So I have used my drawings as studies. I have also used my drawings where I photograph them and input them in the computer. And then I go to Photoshop and I open a file Blank, state, blank document, and I take a piece of this drawing and a piece of that drawing, and I throw them in, that, in there, and I start moving stuff around, but I'm not drawing necessarily. I'm using Photoshop as collage. I'm using my own work to move around in there and create a whole new composition. And I've actually like done 60 editions sometimes of one idea, and then I'm so sick of it, I won't even do the painting anymore. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, you've done that. Um, so, so that was a later process. But um, Joe, I, have I answered your question? Okay, okay. You wanna move to the other room? I think we should, huh? Uh, before I leave the room. These, lo these larger drawings here, um, something new is starting to happen. Um, and what happened, first of all, is size. Um, you know, you sort of have to shake things up in the studio because you get into ruts, and one way to shake things up is to either go big or go small. So either way, you're gonna make, you're going to change the way you think. But one thing that started happening was, as, you're, as, I'm, as I'm trying to move the work forward, um, you sometimes carry with you like where you've been and of course here it is there's the the lyrical line and and you know still kind of the flower kind of shape and then there's this blue abstract line that starts to enter the work and this and then here this black line that seems rather mechanical compared to what the what's in the background starts to enter the work and then in that red one also so the ornamental starts to morph into this kind of thing here in these large drawings and I'm trying to leave this behind but um, sometimes you have like one foot in the future and one foot in the present and you don't really know where it's going until you keep working. All right, let's, we can move in the other room. Okay, so, um, so that drawing back there um, was that drawing was as you can see there's that duality again of this very architectural form on the right and then a more lyrical <coughs> that drawing when I started that drawing it was a quarter that size and I kept drawing on it and I kept adding paper and the drawing kept wanting to be bigger so it ended up like that and I, and I remember I, I was trying to get away from um, that, that real sort of, you know, gesture line. So I started drawing on the computer with the cursor because it would oppose my hand. And so I did a study, I did a little sketch on the computer of the, I think the top part of that architectural form. And I said, yeah, yeah, I, I want that, that kind of mechanical line. Because you know, you get tired of the way you always draw. You get tired of your own work and you get tired of doing, you have to keep pushing. And so I really wanted to have that opposition between the mechanical versus the organic, but I, this, I just want to make sure I get this across. These are not like um, uh, strategized decisions. This all happens in a very subconscious way. And I don't, most of the time I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just drawing and I'm letting the work lead me. And I find that when I start injecting myself 
too much in the drawing and making too many judgments is when I really can paralyze myself fairly fast. So the best thing to do usually is to get out of your own way when you're working. And I have a tough time with that because again, it's this very intense sort of back and forth that happens when you're working, you know, and, and you have to uh, put the ego aside and you have to really put a lot of things aside and just, just let the drawing take you to where you're going, even if you don't know what the outcome is or even what it means. And uh, that's a very hard thing to trust. And it's, it's so interesting because I've been doing this for 37 years and I still struggle with that, you know, getting out of my own way. So um, this drawing just kind of like happened and it kept saying, add paper, add paper and then all of a sudden the left side appeared and I started to see that kind of just the position happening. Then this other big guy happened here and I was really enjoying the size of uh, this very big, you know, I, I don't like doing monumental, I'm not interested in doing monumental work. Um, I still want it to be human scale where I feel like I can walk into that space. So I'm not interested in doing, you know, I have done wall drawings and they're a lot of fun and they're very temporary and I like the fact that you make them and then they're gone after the show ends. But um, this size seemed really great. You know, I felt like I could really move my body into the work. It was very physical um, making this work. And um, it also changed the way I was thinking about space and now here it's becoming a little bit more of a combination of more of the architectural with the gestural. And when I was doing these, I was also doing smaller pieces and then I also did a bunch of paintings um, that were related to these drawings. You have any questions? Yeah. Especially that little painting. Uh, the drawing? No. It's not. No, you know, I don't know how I finished this drawing. It was, um, no, I mean, it could be, that's a, you know, that's a hard question because there's a lot of layering that goes on here. And, um, and then this, this line got drawn on top of that line. And, um, and see, it kept on going, but then I erased it, or I blocked it out. So, um, so something happened here um, in 2006, 2007. Um, these drawings came about because I grew up, like a lot of us in this room, during, I was a teenager during the Vietnam War um, and the Civil Rights Movement. And I was actually a very sort of engaged teenager in politics. I, and you know, we watched the entire coverage of the Vietnam War at night. Walter Cronkite was always eating dinner with us. Um, and I had that experience of, of seeing, I mean, it was on TV. And during the Iraq War, um, these drawings were done in 2006, 2007. The coverage was somewhat limited. I don't know if you remember, but we weren't, they stopped showing the coffins coming back from the war. And um, there was kind of like I felt this separation between what was going on here and what was going on over there. And everything here seemed kind of hunky-dory 
and then there's this raging war over there that we're involved in. And I was a little bit disturbed by um, the distance I was feeling from that. And um, so I started looking up um, websites where soldiers would post pictures of what they were experiencing. And um, I found a lot of websites, and I looked at a lot of pictures, and I saw some videos, and I saw some pretty horrific things. And I um, kept looking and looking, and I, I needed to somehow bring this inside of myself. I needed to actualize for myself that this was really going on. And one way of knowing this, one way of internalizing something is by drawing it or drawing it out. Like when I go to a different place, every time I go to a different place with a residency, one of the first things I do is I go to the landscape and I do a diagrammatical drawing of where I am. And all of a sudden it situates for me the place I'm in. It's a very internal kind of exercise. And um, so I looked at those at those pictures those, the soldiers were posting and they were pretty horrific and, and I started to get numb because that's what happens when you're facing terrible things. You sort of, part of you shuts down so you can actually cope with it on some level. And I wanted, I wanted to make drawings about it, but I didn't want to make drawings that were political. I didn't want to make drawings that, that I didn't want to take those images and, and plunder from somebody else's photographs, because that wasn't my experience. My experience was being here and, see, and hearing about what was going on and then looking at these pictures. But I, I needed to make something, I needed to draw them. I needed to draw the experience that I was having in my head. So I started making these drawings that dealt with that, with the war. And they're very, they're not very, graphic, meaning there's, you know, there's no blood spurting out or whatever. And, um, and I wanted to create a certain kind of psychological, I wanted to, to give a sense in the drawing that there was this distance I was feeling. And that's why they're sparse in the composition. Now all this I'm telling you after the fact, okay, I mean, it's, I'm sitting up here you know, explaining something I did in 2006 after the fact, but when I was doing them, I really wasn't thinking about the distance. I was just drawing what I was feeling, and then it was obvious to me that the sparseness was at, of the composition added to the fact that I was a little bit removed from that action, and it translated that way. So I did a series of these, and um, I also did some, um, these little paintings that I've never shown, except the only person that is here that has seen them is my husband and Kathy Fox, because Kathy made a studio visit one time, and I, she was writing for the book, and I pulled them out, and I showed them to her, and no one else has ever seen them. But I didn't feel right about those little paintings, because they were not my images, and I, I, it just didn't feel right for me to take someone else's image and, and make a painting out of it. I, you know, if I had been over there and it, I would have been photographing the thing, then it would have been different. Um, so there were paintings that I made related to this. At the same time I was doing these drawings, I was doing those drawings, which are very abstract and very different from this. So I was doing two, two bodies of work at the same time, and I was also painting two bodies of work at the same time. So there's a whole body of work related to these paintings, and then there's a whole body of work related, not a whole body, I mean, there weren't that many, okay? They might have been like maybe, I don't know, six or seven very large paintings. And those were very war-related, never showed them, and they're gone, I've gotten rid of them. Um, except one that Spellman, um, not Spellman, um, Agnes Scott has one, I think. And um, so I had to sort of internalize this for myself to make it real to me that this conflict was happening. And um, that's where these drawings came along. 
And then at the same time, these were being done. And I think they sort of express a little bit more of a, I don't know, I, 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 Miriam Karp is doing the interview with me, did the interview with me for the catalog. Um, and she, she actually did a great job. She's not here right now. She's out of the country. And she said that she felt that these drawings sort of expressed a certain kind of intensity that I was not, ca that I was not expressing in these drawings because these are very quiet in a way and these are a little bit more loud. And she said that there was a dichotomy between how I, about that, that these drawings expressed the intensity that these weren't expressing. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it made a lot of sense to me when she said it and we discussed it in the catalog. Anybody want to ask a question? Because I'm out of breath. <laughs> Where's that water? Okay. Okay, so um, that, that, this. Okay, so th this was uh, an interesting departure here. After, after completing those drawings and many of those paintings, I spent nine months in the studio working and nothing was working for me. Meaning I was, there were a lot of misfires and, um, okay. There were a lot of misfires and what's interesting about drawing and painting is that a lot of times you're in the studio and nothing's working. And you keep at it, you keep at it, and most of it ends up in the garbage. Then occasionally something announces itself, and you, you kind of go, wait a minute, what is this? And, and I don't understand it, but there's something here. I don't really know what this is, but I'm, I'm going to put it aside. And, and then six months later, it turns out that that thing that, it, that announced itself early on all of a sudden has come back and now I know I'm, I'm running with it. Okay, I'm running with it. I, I, doesn't mean I understand it, but I'm, I'm, something's happening and I'm just gonna keep on moving with it. But what happened here was I had had these nine months of total um, nothing going on in the studio except me being frustrated and throwing drawings away. And then it snowed in Atlanta and we had this like terrible, wonderful snowstorm and then an ice storm on top. I don't know if y'all remember, it happened in 2011. And when I looked outside, it was very quiet and it was, the whole city was paralyzed and it was almost like looking at myself and my own paralysis in the studio. And I went, that's me, I'm, I'm totally paralyzed in here. I can't get any, I just can't get going in the studio. And I, and so I went in the studio that morning. It was, you know, the, the whole city was frozen. It was very quiet. It was very stark outside, a lot of white and, and dark trees. And, um, and I started knocking out drawings. And um, this was one of the first drawings I did. And I didn't, I didn't know what this was about. I, I just, I mean, it was like I was just, I was sometimes doing three drawings a day, which is a lot because, you know, it's, it's coming. This thing's now happening. And so um, these started happening and, and they were these like totems that were, you know, it seemed to be like I was stacking all these forms. and. And I, I was asking myself, uh, it, was, it, was an, it was an existential kind of, you know, I was having an existential crisis at the moment, and I was going, what is painting, what is painting, what is making a picture really about? And it seems that I always go to the essential. Like, I, I work from the, the general, then to the very, and I, then I try to go to the core. And it happened with the figure. The figure was broken down to then where it became a fingerprint. And in here, it's like taking all the elements of how to make a picture and trying to make a picture out of that. So what is the picture? A picture of shape, color, form, texture, line, um, erasing, um, different text, you know, different materials. And so I wanted to make, 
um, I, I wanted to really kind of take that experience apart and, and put it in the drawings. Now, there were a lot of drawings made, and it, they're not here. This is just a selection. And, um, and, I, and this stacking thing was almost like, I remember telling my husband, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to paint anymore. I'm going to quit painting. Um, and I'm just going to make these drawings like these memorials to my own death of painting. <laughs> and he went, yeah, OK, I've heard this before. So you know, and I, and I started like creating these little uh, pedestals. And I said, I'm going to make like these pedestals, like you know, it's important statues on top of a pedestal. It's for somebody important. So I'm going to make I'm going to make that line really important and put it on top of this pedestal. And I'm going to because I you know I was also trying to make fun of what I was doing because it had driven me crazy. So I was trying to mock my own kind of art making and and try to bring it down a little bit and not not hold. You know, when you're an artist, you're Painting and drawing can be very intimidating. And there's a tremendous history. So that history can hang over your head. And um, it was sort of like trying to throw, throw that off the pedestal. You know, this is not that important. I'm not curing cancer here. You know, it's that kind of thing where just making drawings. And um, I'm sure some artists can relate to that. Um, but. So this developed, and, um, and then this little line started coming into the picture um, because I was trying to create an abstract space within a representational space, it's sort of like a, again, a, sort, of, sort of like a paradox. I mean, is it an, where is that line? Is, it, is this the, the floor? And now this is standing on the floor, and you've got these forms on top of this little rickety little table, and it's about to fall. And Miriam, who interviewed me for the catalog, um, she made actually a very good statement about these drawings. She said, uh, you know, these, you say they're about the vocabulary of drawing. She said, but they're also, she said, about the human condition. And she said, meaning that, you know, it's, they're not, things aren't so stable anymore. And as we age, at least for me, I don't know about you all, but the older I get, the less that I believe in stability, because I think things are always too much, and they continue to be in flux. And she talked about that in the catalog, and I thought that was a good observation. Um, anybody have anything to say? Okay, so um, I went to Marfa on a residency, and um, that was an amazing experience because of the desert. And I had um, I had never lived in the desert. Um, I grew up. I mean, I was born by the ocean, and um, and I was just blown away by what goes on out there in the space. And the fact that you can see a mountain, um, you see a mountain in the morning, and then at noon, where's the mountain? Because the, the light has completely shifted, and so there's, there's this like beautiful thing that happens throughout the day where you see, you see things and then you don't see them. And that just played up right up, my, that was just right up my alley in a lot of ways. And, and so there, this new color, this new color entered the work you know a lot of yellows and oranges and then there were these amazing well I'm not gonna say it because I don't like literalizing my work so I'm not gonna say it there was a lot of atmosphere I'll, I'll say that there's a lot of atmosphere and the color had tremendous heat to it and um, and also there was a lot of stillness um, a lot of stillness and so that started to enter the work here and then at uh, contemporary in Marfa I had to do a show so I showed a selection of the drawings that I did during my residency there these four are from there and then I did an on-site piece there but the wall in Marfa at the contemporary was a horizontal wall 
in this piece was done for it. But um, I wanted to do a wall drawing here <coughs> because it's part of my, of my thing that I do wall drawings sometimes. And I, you know, we were doing, we were hanging the show. We only had a limited amount of time, so I, so I decided to do it, uh, reprise this piece. But this is a vertical wall, and it's very important always to respond to the space and to the architecture when you're making something on a wall. So I just shifted, I just uh, changed this a little bit, and. Um, and uh, move that up so that we could engage the verticality of this space right here. Um, there's that little study over here. Actually, this is the drawing here. And um, there it is over there in, in the big, in big, in bigger scale. So um, any questions? Yeah. For me, the rectangle. Um, for me, the rectangle is. Um, where's Maggie Davis? <laughs> I told her this once. Uh, it's um, it's a real grounding thing. It's it's almost like a. It's almost like a metaphor for the self. Okay, but but not over here. It, for me, it's not a door. It's a solid. It's a solid thing. Now, here in some of these drawings, <coughs> excuse me, coughing to the microphone. Um, you know, it's not real solid because it's starting to leave. You know, it's moving out. It's not contained. So, but when it when it's something like this, there's a. There's an anchoring that comes with it. So it's, I had a term for this and it's just escaped my mind, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, all right, so anybody else in here? Rosia, I have a question, up yeah. here. Or you, if you wanna. Maria. You All right, I'll, I'll literalize it. I'll, I'll give you a hint. I don't want to, because I, I just think you need to come to art. I, I don't like explaining. Maria, this is not about you. You're an artist. You get it, okay? But I, I don't like t saying things specifically about things, because then I've taken away your opportunity to interpret the work. And it's so important for you to have your own personal experience with the work and instead of just you know there's amazing thunderstorms out west and they're just curtains that come and here's the sun and then here's the, a giant curtain coming and you're standing here and, you're, and it's not raining where you are and then there's all this like atmosphere and it's not just all dry desert it's the sky does amazing things and the sky had a big effect on me when I was there and what went on in the sky. And so it was like ground and then, and then air and movement. And so that came into the drawing. Well, I really wanted to contrast it with the flatness on the other side, you know? And that other side being so on the wall. And I wanted that thing to move and kind of shake a little bit. Yeah, so that's, <clears throat> that was, um, that little drawing was done in Marfa. And, um, and then I did that big one in Marfa for the show a year later.
So, um, yeah, it, it was, Marfa was very, very good in, because I intend to go back to the desert because I'm really, um, there's a lot to be information out there with the light. The light is amazing. And again, that, that sort of hide and seek that goes on in the space is amazing. So um, that all is uh, fertile ground for me. Okay, so in the back room, um, there's, this, there's several drawings, and I know we all can't fit there, so I'll just talk about them real quick. Um, so again, uh, I come to the end of this over here and this, and um, I'll just talk about those two. And um, I just needed a new way of working. That's one thing that artists are constantly doing. They, they have to find new ways of, of um, getting back into the studio and making new work and being excited about new work and not always repeating what you're doing. So I was also stressed out about where I was going and I was tired. So I decided that what I would do is I would go to the studio, put up a piece of paper, go in there, do one thing, cover it and leave. And then I could just say, oh, I work today. Uh, I, I went to the studio. And um, somehow that relieves tremendous pressure. And, um, and so then the next day I would go in and the piece of paper would be there and this thing would be covered and I'd draw something else and I'd cover it and I'd leave. Then the next day I'd come back and, and I, it was like um, just putting down a thought. Oh, this is what came into my mind today and stick it there. And then try not to make a composition, try not to force something to happen, but um, again, let chance have at it. And, um, and actually, after 30 drawings, I, I, wanted, I wanted to create new juxtapositions. I wanted to get off this little spindly table thing I was doing. You know, I had enough of that. And I wanted to shake things up, and that seemed like a really good way to find new ways of, of uh, composing. So when the paper got kind of filled up with all these pieces of paper that were, then I would remove them and I would start on a new drawing. So I did a bunch of those. And then um, I decided to do this very long piece and I put a piece of paper up and I started the same thing and I would cover it and then I'd get to the end of the paper and I'd add another piece of paper and I'd do something and I'd cover it and I'd leave. And I just said, you know what, just keep doing this. Maybe at the end of the year you'll have a drawing that'll wrap itself, like, I don't know, all around my studio. And it'll just keep on going, and, and that's fine. And I just wanted to see, I, I, I was not trying to make connections, purposeful connections, I was just trying to get something else to happen other than what I was normally, what I had done before. So that drawing developed by, it was 30 days, not 30 consecutive days, but it was 30 days. And I never saw the drawing fully on the wall, because I had to take it down, because I didn't have a 25 foot wall. My wall ended it that particular wall ended around 15 feet. So I would just take sections and I would even close my eyes so I wouldn't see the drawing and put it away and then I just kept adding paper. And then the drawing just stopped. It just ended. And there's a blank space at the end and it looked kind of weird. And I said, boy, I should really put something there because compositionally that just doesn't look right. And another voice said, no, 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 you, you leave that alone because this is really what this drawing's about. It's just, it ends on its own. And that space that's empty is like, um, like it going like this and finishing. You know, it's like, you don't have to get in there and try to make, 
Stop, get out of your own way, leave the drawing alone, let it end with a blank. And that's where the drawing stopped. So it was 30 days of consecutive drawing. I mean, non-consecutive drawing. Okay, that's it. I just want to say one thing. I, I've never said this before, but I'm going to say it because I really feel it. Um, I, I, I'm really happy with the show, and that's like a biggie for me to say that. Um, I left it all on the court here, and drawing is really important to me. It's very personal. I feel like my most, I don't know, sincere work has been in my drawings. And I, I really feel good about the show, and believe me, for Rocio, that's huge. <laughs>